Well, hello again. Today I want to talk about the bits. What does that mean? In the last episode we talked about the numbers. Number one, the physical body. Number two, our inner life or psychology or we could even say our soul. Number three was the outside world, that world we live in where people are. Number four is you, the actor, your individual self. And number five, where the actor, your individual self, your ordinary self, connects to the higher creative part of you. Number five. Chekhov called it the higher creative self. I just called it number five. Or where the real actor in you can be found and which you have to connect into. But today I want to talk about the connection between one and two and we simply start with what I call the bits, not the beats, the bits. For example, you can take any part of your physical body, let's say your finger, and if you move that in a particular way with a particular form, then something happens automatically and spontaneously to your number two. In other words, you don't have to force your feelings. In other words, for example, if I went, now stop, don't do ever that again, because I will really give you <laughs> a good slap. You can see that makes my inner life rather dominant, like a father chastising a child. Another bit you can use on your face, let's stay with the face at the moment, your lips. If I simply bite my bottom lip, not too hard, we don't want to see any blood. The number two will move with that. You'll feel a bit emotional, for example. Not particularly sad, but just a bit emotional. Let's talk about the number one, the physical body, and we're going to divide it because this is much easier to do the bits and not get stuck in your head, oh, what will I do now? What bit will I do now? We could say the physical body is divided into three big categories. Firstly, the head, which is here, and everything on it. It's round, it's bone, it's hard, and it doesn't move much. That's the most important thing. All it can do is forward, back can get the neck can get longer and we can fall into our neck we can all do also do a right and a left if we just twist it or if we just do that that will affect our number two immediately and almost give us a character and almost create a situation that will just automatically come into us then the next section is the torso and it's an important part because that's where all the most important organs are. Well, the head has an organ, it's the brain, and it's really protected like in a cave. It's also where the senses are, hearing, seeing, smelling, and tasting with the tongue. The other sense, the sense of touch, is all over the whole body. So we have the torso, with the heart, the lungs, very important. Also the torso, on the torso the arms are connected and the legs are connected at the bottom, which means the limbs, the will. So those three categories are very, very important. The legs, the willing, the breathing, the feeling, and the head. Cognition, actually, thinking, how we see the world how we connect and view the world. Perception, you could say. So thinking, feeling, because it's breathing, it's in and out. This doesn't breathe, doesn't move very much at all. And the heads are the will where we do things on the earth. So let's give an example of the bits of the legs and how many bits there are. For example, if we started, let's start with the knees. For example, if I walk, I mean, no, that's a bit too contrived. For example, if I just come into my knees a little bit, it's very different and take small steps. For example, if I go further down with the foot and I start to walk, I start with my heels which makes my number two very strong. 
two examples of the bits on the legs. If we come up to the torso, we also have the arms. And the arms are connected, well, they're connected to our uh, breathing and heart. They're connected to our feeling. For example, the arms can express all sorts of things like that, like this, or, for example, like that. I feel relaxed and a bit yawny, a bit sleepy if they're back there. Or they can actually go, go away. Just go away. On the arm, we have elbows, wrists, hands and fingers. And there's so many bits there. I gave an example of this finger. What about this little one here? It's very different if I just hold it up. I feel rather delicate and gentle. For example, if I use my thumb, like, dislike. If I use my wrists, it's very different. If I actually, it's more feminine, it's more ethereal in a way if I'm talking. And see how those gestures, those bits in movement, gestures, affect my vocal tone. For example, now don't do it again, the voice is hard. Here the voice is quite light and, and, and quite gentle and quite, I wouldn't say feminine, but more artistic, an artistic person, for example. So those three categories, head, torso with the arms connected to the feelings, and then the legs connected to the will are very important. Let's go back to the feet again and just notice as I turn away and walk away the heels and then I'll go on to my toes. So, heels. And I'll come back again and heels. Very definite. Or toes. Not on tippy toe, but just the foot touches the earth. Well, it's not the toes really, it's the ball of the foot. This part of the foot here. I don't start with my heels, I start with the, the front of my foot or the ball. Notice the difference. I'll turn around and show that again. Very different. I feel lighter. I feel a little bit off the earth. So that's a, a wonderful way of getting your number two moving. Because this approach to the work is you do not start with your feeling life or your emotions. You don't try and drag them out of yourself from a memory, a past memory. You actually change the form and shape of your number one and I can assure you, number two will begin to move. And that's, you can do that little exercise anywhere. Putting on your clothes, walking to the tube, walking to the bus stop, eating a meal. Just sense it if you actually start to eat your meal um, with your nose forward. Yes, very different. And therefore that brings flexibility into your into your number two, into your soul life. One of the great things about working with the bits, simply to get number two flexible and moving, and you can exercise it at any time, as I just said, is when your agent rings you and there's a casting the next day, what do you do besides panicking and try to quickly learn the lines. That's where the bits really come in. When you're reading your text, something will jump out about the character. Don't think about it too much. And then whatever it is, for example, if it's a, an, a certain proudful, arrogant sort of person, then what would you do? Simply use the bit of the chin and immediately you'll notice the vocal tone changes and you're far superior. For example, if it's quite an emotional scene and you have to cry, which on the spot is quite difficult, what do you do? Simply use the in-breath and hold the breath. 
And then you will notice you need to out-breathe and in crying you can't out-breathe and it comes in bursts. For example, if you're playing an enthusiastic young person, what would you do? Everything would lift. The eyes would open, the eyebrows would just raise, rise a little bit and you would feel that youthful young thing. So, next episode, we're going to talk about how we get the connection between number one and number two in a different way. How do we do it to create a character? So, we'll talk about centers. See you then.